So in the next part of the tutorial we are going to add some decals to this model. So what I've done here is just created a, um, a stencil texture with some different fonts on it um, and I've made sure I've set this to 1024 by 1024 so it's perfectly square. Um, the reason for that is because this applies around your square viewport so if it's not square it will be stretched. Um, so what we're going to do then is just drag this into our alphas. We're going to add another fill layer at the top of our stack. Um, and we might as well just leave it this color for now because it makes it kind of nice and easy to see. So we're going to right click and add a black mask. Um, and in our brush settings we'll just stick with kind of roughly the default brush I think. So default hard and then just change the softness and so on. Um, and then in our stencil we're going to, going to just drag that across into there. So we can see that now appears above our model. Um, so before we use the stencils in here, but now we're going to use them in our actual uh, UV layout. Um, so maybe we'll want something on the top here. So we'll just dolly in until we've got the scale roughly where we want it to be. And we'll change our brush size and we'll just paint over that and that should bring through our text. Um, so obviously this isn't um, what we can do with this particular um, stencil is to uh, paint individual characters as well. So for that you'll need quite a small brush. So it's important you like design your um, design your stencil so they're actually kind of usable. You want a big gap between each one. I've literally just grabbed this one on off the internet to be honest. I do have one I use but for some reason I couldn't find it so that's why we're using this. Um, so obviously we might want to have some bigger characters as well in which case we just dolly out like that and again paint this onto a model like so. Okay, so obviously we can do that for as much of the models as we want, but that's enough of a demo for now. So we can see that is now applying on there. And what we can do is if we select our material, we can go in and we can change things like, if you really wanted to, you could have this actually sticking out or indenting as well. Um, we want to keep the metallic on black because this is paint, not metal. And you can also tweak your roughness, tweak your roughness value as well. Um, just another thing to show you actually in our viewer effects here. Uh, one thing you could do is set your opacity down on your environment map as well. So that can make it kind of easier to see things too. Um, and obviously remember we can pick kind of different um, environment maps that are supplied by default. Obviously you can also bring in your own ones too. Um, so now we've done that, it's looking very kind of even, like it hasn't been um, worn like the rest of the model. So if we just go into our mask, and then we will get rid of our stencil, and we'll select something like, let's have a look at what we've got here. So what we need is a brush to kind of create kind of wear on the edge of that, um, on the edge of that text. So maybe we'll try something like this one, and what we'll probably want to do is just tweak these settings a little bit here. Like so. And then if we just decrease the size of our brush, we we'll want to make sure we're painting in black. So let's just switch that to black. Remember you can press X to do that too. And then what we'll do is we'll just kind of paint out, just click and paint out some wear in some of this text. So obviously you should spend kind of more time on this than I'm doing, but just to give you, I just want to give you an example of what you can do with this. Um, obviously as well you can turn down the grayscale, so if you want to wear, oh you, can, you can't really do that to be fair. Um, if we wanted to do that, obviously what we could do is add a folder on top of this and put a mask in there, so that would be a good way to do that. 
Um, so you can see we're getting some nice wear on that now. Oh, remember, of course, you can also kind of paint in here too. Like you don't need to be uh, specifically like uh, painting on your mask. If you find it easier, you can paint just kind of straight onto the model. As long as you've got the mask selected, that will paint kind of onto there. So yeah, real hacky, but you get the point. So that's created us some nice kind of um, basic kind of decals on this. Um, obviously as well the same with the rust area that I created here. So I've created that rust area but um, obviously if you wanted to, what you'd really need to do is go around and apply like rust areas on your whole model. Um, so yeah that's kind of about it really. Uh, so think if there's any other little things I can show you. Obviously you've got an eraser tool here. Um, you have things like post effects so you can tweak your anti-aliasing. Let's get to turn that on. Um, so you can take that on, you get that kind of softer kind of look around your edges. You can change your color, color correction, you can even add depth of field if you've got a larger scene and um, exposure. You can even add a vignette around it as well and glare and so on. Um, but obviously most of this stuff I don't really use it that, that regularly to be fair. I'd rather keep the settings as um, default and just change my environment map. Um, obviously we can come back in here and tweak our kind of final colours as well. So probably rather that was a bit more desaturated. So now we're going to export our um, our textures from our model and then we can preview this in something like Marmoset or Unreal, whatever you want to use. So all we need to do is go to File, Export Textures and um, by default this has got Document Channels plus Normal Map. So we've got all our channels plus our Normal Map. So um, that would be fine, but you also have other settings as well. PBR metal roughness, um, you can have them output for standard for Unity or for Unreal Engine and so on. Um, so yeah, in this one we add things like an emissive which we don't need and we don't really need the, the height map as well. So let's just go back to normal. Um, yeah, we might as well export those and what we'll do is I'm going to browse to my tutorial folder We'll change, put in a uh, folder called Output. So we'll select that folder and then hit Export. Um, one thing I didn't show you here is you can set obviously your document size and you can also set um, the texture format as well. So I probably should have run through that. So yeah, look, we can set our texture size here. It might work in um, TGA or BMP and so on. And you can export the size that you want as well. So obviously you can go higher and you won't lose any quality. Um, you will just get the higher size with the same quality texture. Okay, so we'll bring in our low poly into Marmoset and we will load these in. So from our output folder, select our normal map. And assign this to the model. Now make sure you flip Y because we'll be working in DirectX. So we will add our roughness map into the gloss slot and we'll load our albedo into here. We'll make sure we set this to metalness. So we'll load our metallic material there. Um, obviously other little tweaks you can do, you can add your own, your occlusion map that you uh, baked out earlier, which I believe is that one. So get that extra little detail on there. So obviously you don't need this, but um, it can look nice just to have that little dark area down there. Um, so if we go to our sky you can see at the moment we're using one that's pretty evenly lit with kind of grey lighting hence the situation we're getting on our model. So obviously you can pick your different um, your different environment maps from here too. And you should find the display is very basically exact um, exactly the same as you're getting in uh, Substance Painter. So yeah that's how you output your um, that's how you output your uh, textures for use in whatever engine um, you need them for.